Thanks, Ellis. Good to be here. Dude, been a long time coming. Yes, it has. Uh, pumped to have you here. Guys, Ty has an amazing story. Just a, a true leader for the Lord, uh, making a massive impact in his community through real estate. And, uh, man, I just I, I love what you're doing. I'm excited to have you here. I think you're going to be a massive encouragement to our audience. And uh, being an entrepreneur and using real estate to seriously make kingdom impact locally. And so, man, tell everyone where you're based out of, name of your country, you know, a little bit about yourself and we can jump in. Yeah, sounds good. Thanks, Ellis. Uh, so my name is Todd Bowen and I'm in the West Michigan uh, market. Arr, sounds cold yes. out here in San Diego, man. <laughs> it's currently snowing outside. So Woo. yeah. Um, but no, my, uh, my wife is from the west side of Michigan, and when we uh, met, she did not have to twist my arm because West Michigan is actually very beautiful, caveat, in the summer. Okay. So, yeah, we're right next to Lake Michigan, and got the beaches, and the tourist towns, and lots of stuff to do over here. So uh, most of our investing is um, about 20 minutes from our home here in a small metro called Muskegon, Michigan. Now, did you did you start as a real estate investor? What were you doing before you started doing this full time? Yeah, so I started real estate or investing in real estate as a side hustle back in 2017. While starting to invest in real estate, I was a project manager at an environmental engineering company. And I was with that firm for 13 years. And that I think will come up in my story. Hmm. Uh, well, man, let me do this. Let me pray for us, dude, because I know you. I know you got a powerful story and journey to walk us through. So let me just lift, get this to God, man, and we'll get going. I thank you so much for this time. Thank you for Todd. Thank you for the way that you've given him a vision for how to impact the nations right in his own backyard. And thanks for his heart and his love for you that you've you've placed in his life. I pray that his story will be an encouragement to all of us today. Pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. So you're working for this job. Did you buy your first deal while you were still W-2? Yes, we did. Okay. Yep. Tell, tell me about that first one. Okay. So back in 2017, even 2016, it was questioning the old adage of, am I going to work here for 30, 40 years? Yeah. Is this my life? That's a long time. And also in combination with that, it was you know, the market just dumping money blindly into a 401k felt a little risky. And like, I didn't have control over what was going on with that. So at that time, I started to look up research, uh, you know, ways, alternative ways, uh, investing and real estate, of course, is one of those that, that pops up. And sheepishly called my financial advisor at the time and just said, hey, um, what do you think of real estate investing? And to my surprise, he said, Todd, I love real estate. I have 17 homes and they are like little ATM machines. I'm like, wow. From my financial advisor, who... <laughs> our Bro, you've been keeping it out for me this market. whole time, man. What are we doing? Yeah, come on. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, with that conversation, he offered to introduce me to who now is what I would call a great friend, um, you know, five years later, um, the, the guy he introduced me to was a real estate agent. He was a licensed builder and he was also an investor himself with several tens of units, yeah. like full-time making a living investing same age as me. And so called him up. We met and started looking at properties. And so, I mean, that was the, that was your in, right? To kind of get into your first deal. That was, yeah, the first opportunity to, I would say, you know, kind of where the rubber met the road, mm -hmm. all theoretical. It was reading books, it was listening to podcasts, 
And I think that just kind of amped all that up. You know, I was reading more. I was setting more goals. Um, you know, I'm going to do this as a side hustle. And at that point is when I started to think, well, okay, I'll do this as a side hustle, maybe with a goal to replace my income. Maybe this is my avenue to become financially free. Maybe this will produce time freedom. Maybe I can retire early. All of that, those thoughts on, on the front were all about me and what it was going to do for me. But as we get into this, I think I'll unfold how that. Well, let's talk about it. What was the turning turn. point for you then, man? I mean, you did one, you got one. I mean, clearly let's, let's, I don't want to, I want to, how, how big is your portfolio now, Todd? Just to fast forward a little bit, we'll come back. Yeah. Uh, we are currently at 20 units. 20 units. Yeah. Spread your out primary. between nine different properties. Something yeah, like nine properties. And then what's cool about what you're doing is you're essentially using kind of leveraging, I say leveraging in a good way, right? You're leveraging your property and leveraging and serving nonprofits that need housing in your local local communities, right? Yeah. So let's jump into that. That's yeah. So let's let's talk about that turning point, man, where you were like, okay, okay, not only is this a great vehicle for financial freedom, but holy cow, man, like I can begin to use this for a bigger purpose. Let's talk about that. Yeah. So, you know, during that time where I was ramping up and listening to podcasts, I mean, just crushing podcasts, one and a half speed, every minute I could, all my drive time at my W-2 job was listening to the podcast, soaking up as much info uh, as, I, as I could. And in doing so, one of those episodes I, I heard was of a guy, I believe, who was in Missouri. And he was similar to myself. He had a small portfolio and he was renting his houses, duplexes, uh, small multifamilies to nonprofit organizations that had housing programs. And it was after we had, I think it was five units. We had a duplex and a triplex. And <laughs> I started managing those myself while working a full-time job. I wanted to know what that was all about. Mm -hmm. Quickly realized I hated it. it <laughs> that was not fun. We did hire a property management company to take care of those. And it went a little smoother. But still, that thought of that guy in Missouri kept running through my mind. And I think this is, we fast forward to year 2018, we had purchased a vacant five unit building and it needed some rehab, nothing major. But as I was in there rehabbing on the time, nights and weekends, I was thinking, what am I going to do with this building? How are we going to manage this? And that podcast episode kind of jumped in my mind. I think that was maybe a prompt, you know, it was God's timing. And he said, Todd, you need to reach out to the local nonprofit organizations, research those, see what kind of need is in your community. And maybe this building would be a good fit for them. And sure enough, we no longer got that thing rehabbed and, and ready for occupancy. And let me backtrack. It, it took a few calls to get through the gatekeeper and to pitch our ID. Yeah. Well, like, give me some tips on that, man. Cause like, you know, we, that can be difficult. Like who, how did you like, you know, you just can't search nonprofits. So like, how did you, right. if someone hears this, like, man, that's a great idea. Cause I mean, you're, I mean, essentially it's not like you're, you're, they're paying market rents, right? Cause they need housing. Am I correct in that Todd? Yep. That's correct. So it's a, you're, you're, it's not like you're, it's a charity here. I mean, you run a legit business and you're helping yeah. nonprofits along the way. So yeah. walk me more, dot, dot, go into that because that I think a lot of people are going to be interested in and don't know how to do that. Right. When you start to research anything, it's, you know, sitting at your computer and, you know, typing in things like housing programs, you know, local nonprofit organizations. And then sometimes you have to peel the onion, get past the first layer as far as finding out what those nonprofit organizations do and who they serve and what their mission is. And the first one that we, we called happened to be an organization that's been around for 75 years, so well-established, well-funded, and they serve domestically abused women and children. So those type of victims or clients that have been in 
tough relationships and don't have anywhere to go. They're afraid, they're alone. And this particular nonprofit has a, a shelter, but that shelter is not a permanent residence. And so when we finally got through to them and talked to their executive director and their director of, of housing, we brought them to this five unit building and said, look, we would like to offer this entire building to you. There's five units, five separate units, and we'd like to rent the whole building to you. You may put your clients in these units as you see fit. You may move them in and out as you see fit. And we will you know, take a back seat as a property owner and, and let you do what you're good at. And that's you know, housing these individuals that, that need some help. Right. And so, yeah, that took off. They, they agreed to it. It's a master lease structure. Yeah, it is. So we, we structure the lease between Trinity Investment Group, our company, and the nonprofit organization. Got it. And then they essentially sublease to their clients. And that is, you know, kind of their business. Right. And there are two things we had to put in our lease that we wanted to see. And one of those things that, you know, helps us as a landlord or a property owner is, you know, if there's tenant caused damage, we would like them to be responsible for that. Hmm. So that, that was one of the key things that, that we wanted in our lease and, and they agreed to it. And they actually signed a two-year lease. Wow. So, you know, we're just getting going. This is still on the side, still working a full-time job. They were, they were moving people in the building. And about a month later, they called up and said, hey, Todd, do you guys have any other properties? <laughs> More need. <laughs> you know, that's the call every investor wants. Yeah. To, right? yeah. And, you know, it just happens, you know, again, God's timing we had a duplex that both units had recently, like within days become vacant. And we were in there doing the turns, sprucing them up, new flooring, new paint, you know, just getting everything clean, um, freshened up. And we walked the um, housing manager for this organization through. And she said, man, I wish we, I could live here. This is better than my house. So I'm thinking, all right, we're doing something right. And, you know, long story short, they ended up taking both units in that duplex. And, you know, the, the snowball is starting to build. And it's, we're right about the time where I started thinking, okay. Yeah, this is, well, this is massive, by the way, right? Because <laughs> what, as a real estate investor, you already know what you, like, you know, the biggest thing when we're looking at deals is comps. Like, can we rent these units for X, right? And that's going to determine our purchase price. Mm -hmm. Pretty nice when you know what someone's willing to pay and you have demand before you ever even get the building. So at that yes. point, I'm sure light bulbs are going off for you, right? Oh, and it, it just keeps getting better. You know, a few months later, this puts us at April of 2019. They call and said, hey, Todd, you have any more units. We have more need. And at this time, we didn't have anything. I'm like, no, I'm sorry, we don't. But if you give me some type of, you know, soft commitment, verbal commitment, I'll go shopping. I'll start looking. And they said, yeah, we, we have a need. We have an opening. Um, and they kind of started giving me criteria of what they were looking for. Kind of an area, you know, a two or three bedroom. So it started to develop these parameters that I could just go make a list with Doug, my real estate agent builder, investor buddy. And we would just start looking at houses, looking at houses. And we looked at this one. I said, let's make an offer right now. And did that and small rehab 30 days later, boom, we've housed another one with this agency. Wow. And that was, yeah, that was 2019. So things, you know, just, really started going well. And I was about to say a minute ago, that's when I think the light bulb went off that there's a lot of need in this community, even though it's not that big of a community. Uh, there's a lot of need. Why don't I start looking into some other organizations? Let's see if we can transition 
our focus, transition our niche, maybe create a niche in this direction of helping out these nonprofit groups. And so some further research and some more, you know, good timing. I think that brings us up to 2020 now um, on the timeline. And <laughs> this is where the leap of faith also starts to come in. It's uh, getting toward the end of 2020. We're getting very close to that point where we've replaced my income at my W-2 job. You know, I'm talking this over with my wife. Do we? Don't I? Do I? And as soon as I made the decision to give my two-week notice, we had um, a vacant property, uh, vacant land that we had for sale for some time that sold. The proceeds of that sale was the exact amount that we bought our next three unit with before the end of 2020. And also during that time frame, we were watching church online and I saw this guy talking about um, his organization, his nonprofit organization that works with substance abuse recovery, sober home living, and reentry citizens from in incarceration. I'm thinking it was like a 30 second blip on the announcements on, at church. And I said, I got to talk to that guy. So I just cold called him and, you know, check their website out. And notice that they do some men's and women's group homes. I told him our story, just like I'm doing now. And he said, we have a waiting list of guys right now. We, we need another men's home. Hmm. And so what I thought was going to be, you know, going back to the goals in 2017 and getting started in this, it was all about me. Self-centered on, you know, I'm going to be financially free. I'm going to have time freedom. Well, God had other plans. As soon as I made that commitment, that leap of faith to leave the W-2 job, he opened so many doors and so many opportunities and just laid things out in front of me and said, you know, go, here is what I have for you. You thought you were going to have time, free time. I'm going to keep you busier than you've ever been. And that's what 2021 looked like. So we're only a year into this. My last day at my W-2 job was December 4th, 2020. So just over a year ago. And since then, man, we got that three unit. We added another unit to a space on that, on that five unit building. Um, we worked with a, we started working with another, a third nonprofit organization. And we found a group home for that. Um, organization that works with reentry and recovery. Todd, are you using all your own money right now? Great question. So in the beginning, we had a little nest egg saved up. And instead of putting that in the market, we use that to go buy the first duplex. And then, of course, through listening to all these podcasts, heard about the Burr strategy, buy, rehab, rent, refinance, repeat. So we did that. We refinanced that and pulled that money back out. And then we were able to buy that three unit. And then at some point in there, we did reach out to a private lender that um, brought some equity to a deal or some capital. And um, similar situation though, six months after we purchased and rehabbed, uh, we, we got a loan on that property and paid them back. And, you know, started building that track record. And then another strategy we utilize is the home equity line of credit. And that's, you know, use that money, go purchase something we like to buy. We like to make cash offers, no inspections. Because going back to Doug, my, my investor buddy, when, when we're walking through a house, he's pointing out everything that's terrible, everything that I, I was going to hate the cost of doing this. You know, you don't want this. I mean, it was like a walking through inspection on the initial visit. Uh -huh. And so that made me very comfortable making those cash offers, no inspections and, you know, getting what, what, what is a cash offer for a, for a, a duplex in your market right now? That first one was 50,000 for both units. 
Yes. Wow. Yep. And then the next three unit was 41,000. Wow. A little rough though. It, it, that one needed some work. Dude, you're like the McDonald's founder, man. You're leveraging your house. You're taking the equity out of your house. What'd your wife think of this when you told her, honey, we're going to take the equity we have in our house to go buy a three unit deal that looks like it probably is about to fall over. <laughs> That's funny because that three unit deal, we inherited tenants and we had to evict two of them right away. So we showed up one day and there was a pile of belongings from someone in the driveway. Gross. But she, honestly, we talked about it a little and <laughs> she, I guess, trusted what I was doing. And then when she saw the nonprofit groups get on board, I think is when the light bulb may have clicked for her that, okay, he's actually doing good for the community and good for these organizations and good for humanity, as opposed to just trying to quit his job yeah, kind of thing. Because we're pretty conservative in nature. We still don't have a ton of, like if you look at debt to equity, that's a ratio I like to look at on our portfolio. And I think we're in the mid thirties, 34, 35% debt to equity, meaning we have much more equity than debt. So a few of these properties are paid off um, with, with no debt. And that kind of brings us to looking forward. You know, when you run out of capital, now we're talking to a bank who is willing to look at our entire portfolio, especially those three properties that are paid in full and say, we're willing to give you a business line of credit to continue doing right. you know, what you're doing. Yeah, they're taking the portfolio value and saying, hey, we'll give you equity yeah. across all of these. They're, they would take that as collateral. Which is gonna be how much, Todd? Um, well, if you take the equity of everything and those three properties, you know, maybe five to 600,000. Yes, dude, that's amazing. <laughs> like to think about, here you are, man, you know, no experience and a bank's willing to give you half a million dollars to go and buy more real estate so that you can continue to be a blessing to your city. I, I This is the message of Kingdom REI, man, that like, I believe entrepreneurship, I see real estate as not the vehicle. There's lots of vehicles, but it is an yeah. amazing vehicle to, to seek out kingdom advancement, man, to seek out kingdom impact. And so, you know, I love that, dude. It's just an inspiring story, man. So I'm so pumped for you to be able to share it. And um, and even here, I didn't know that you know, that's a new update for me too, man, uh, the the 500K line of credit. So that's massive. Well, we haven't locked that up. That's just something. You'll lock it up. You'll lock it up. With right now. You'll lock um, it up. Yeah, we just think there's much more good out there. Um, we're currently working with four different organizations now, four years into this, five years, I guess. So working with four and we're talking with two more, you know, for example, I just got an email last week from a new organization that I had a meeting with good old Panera bread meeting. And, uh, they, the title the subject of the email said, we are ready to work with you guys. Wow. I open up the email and it's this whole list of criteria. You know, we, we like what you're doing. We haven't done this model before, but let's, let's give this a try. And so, you know, one, one thing that does for us, too, is if you think about it, when we get that criteria and we have a tenant, we have the tenant before we have the property. So most investors, even how we started, we were looking for the property. Right. And then we had to go get the tenant. Yeah. I so, mean, a great businessman always got demand before you have the product, right? So that's, that's brilliant, honestly. Well, I, I don't take credit for that. Hundred percent. No, God has God has provided that, dude. Let's let's yeah. let's change course, man. I want to ask you about this forty eight unit deal you did. So you here you are, you know. Now you got the portfolio of single family homes. We met, you know, beginning of last year, early early last year. Next thing I know, man, you're buying a forty eight unit deal. So walk us through <laughs> what that pivot, what allowed you to purchase that forty eight unit deal, and how that's going. 
Well, hey, man, one of, your podcast was one of them that I was pounding. So listening to you, hearing those compelling stories, it kind of drove that desire that, okay, I need to be part of this community. Are you kidding me? You're putting, you know, kingdom-minded, faith-driven folks with real estate in the same place? Sign me up. So, you know, yeah, we met a year ago and joined the mastermind. And then through that mastermind, met some awesome folks who were looking at deals all over the country. And they, it was just after a couple months of, you know, talking to them on a weekly basis and networking with them, getting to know them, building trust. And, and you too, you know, we were all getting to know each other. Yeah. yeah. They, um, they presented a deal that they had under contract and they offered for me to jump on the GP team and, and co GP this deal, which was a 48 unit uh, apartment building in, in Iowa. And that's another awesome blessing that God gave us in 2021 was that opportunity. Whereas even a month before, you know, meeting you and, and last year, I, I didn't think there was any way possible that, you know, that could be me, you know, a part owner in a, a larger deal. And so, you know, the goal for a lot of investors is to scale up and start with the onesies and the twosies, but then ultimately, you know, get past that and get into these larger apartment deals. And yeah, just the, the kingdom minded folks within your community just made that possible for me. So very grateful for that. That's awesome, man. Looking to continue that relationship and, you know, possibly even work with some other, other folks. Yeah. Yeah. Our community, man, you're a big part of that. And I'm so pumped that you're a part of that. So folks who are listening, I mean, like, are, what do you, what's next, man? Are you looking for more capital partners? I mean, you know, what, what's, what's the growth plan look like and, and what do you need, right? Like to, I mean, what, what are you praying? What's, what, what are you expecting God to, to bring into your life path for, for that to, uh, to that to work? That's a loaded question, man. Well, let's, I mean, this is why you're here, man. This is why you're here. You got a kingdom no. vision, man. I'm trying to support it. Talk to us. I, I love it. And I love the fact that it pushes me to become vulnerable because I had the tendency to set some pretty high goals or at least have those big vision, you know, future, you know, what could this be? What if? And so I'm going to start there. Part of that is, Seeing the need that we have in this small community of 35,000 people, working with four nonprofit groups, there's a lot of cities in Michigan, but let's get bigger than that. There's a lot of states. So just think of the number of cities, number of states that have the same need, and there's got to be these types of organizations in, in all those mid to bigger cities. So part of my goals, you know, dreams, wants is to find a way to scale this business model and potentially move outside of my local community and, you know, start looking at other cities in Michigan, um, start partnering with folks in other states that can be boots on the ground, that can um, learn their, about their local nonprofit organizations and, and just see if we can scale this. I mean, there's even been, you know, crazy thoughts of, hey, can you, um, oh, what's the word? Franchise, a model, but I have no idea. Yeah. Uh, so, dude, we got to get you to come in and speak to our coaching program, man. By the way, Kingdom REI has now a coaching program to help investors learn the business and get going in this. But, dude, I think there are a lot of people in there who could be, you know, trying to figure out what is their niche and right in their local backyard, man. They could be looking at deals, you know, and if, you, and if they could have someone like you to be like, yep, that, that fits or that doesn't. So, remind me, man, we'll, we'll get you on that. We'll get you inside that platform too. To, Absolutely. Uh, to do no, I'd, I would love to because, you know, getting at the point now where you know, those are the big goals, big dreams, you know, 
the, the maybe, maybe someday kind of a thing. But even before that, I feel kind of led to, you know, start sharing this with others. Um, teach yeah, but you know what's funny, man, about model. that one day thing, I think most people have that thought and look what's happened in two years, dude. Like, you know, I always say this, this is why our whole tagline man, is you're one connection away. And it's, you know, I think we have these 10 year targets and the reality is like, we work in terms of 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, man. Like that's like, you know, we have our own timeline and then God has his own. And the reality is someone always, someone already has what you want, what you need. And like, it's making those connections. And so I say that for you, brother, but also that for those listening of, you know, we always like, oh, one day I want to do this or one day I'm going to have a portfolio like Todd. I'm like, dude, we're talking about a year. Like you're a year from that. You're two years from that. And, you know, it's, it's taking action. It's like you said earlier, surrendering over that, that will over to God and seeing the doors that he opens up, man, you'd be shocked. I mean, it's just amazing. Let me think about my journey. I mean, three years ago, I was a full-time pastor. Right. And so, you know, it, we're just testimonies, man, of like, <laughs> God doesn't work on our timeline. Sometimes slower, but sometimes much faster too. So Right, and I think that's part of our, you know, duty. And, you know, that's why we're here today is to share that message and let others know that, you know, this isn't 20 years away. This is yeah. 10 years away. Yeah. You know, could be doing this in a couple of years. Yeah. Todd, I mean, how do folks, um, I want to make sure people know where to go to find you, get in touch with you. I know a lot, I think a lot of people are going to want to reach out to you, man. Who knows? Maybe there's somebody listening is like, hey, I want to be a part of this mission. I can fund, you know, I got a couple hundred grand that I can help fund deals. Maybe you need that. Maybe you don't, you know, but, but where do people find you at, man? Yeah, real quick um, to go in concert with that. It would be nice to start talking to some folks that are like-minded and that have some capital that want to be part of a bigger mission than you know just making money yes mm -hmm. that's important but part of what we're looking to do is expand into working with more organizations and the model we're looking at doing um, which isn't anything new but it's like a hotel motel or even office space conversion model into micro apartment units and we, we feel like we can bring more affordable units to a market by looking at that model and therefore help you know some of these agencies we're, we're talking to one right now and i'm sorry if i'm rambling but we're talking to an agency that has 66 families living in motels permanently as of right now because they're homeless they can't find a place to rent can't find a place to buy most of them have jobs and they're living in motels and it's ridiculous rates it's not you know, it's weekly motel rates. Mm -hmm. We're thinking mm -hmm. if we can bring more units to a community that are affordable, we can help lower that stat right there. And that's just, it's just one agency. Right. So yeah, with that, that's kind of the direction we're looking to go. We feel like we can make a bigger impact if we are looking at properties that have more spaces. What, what's your, where, where do folks go, man? Best way to reach me is probably going to be uh, my email, and that is trinitygroup88 at gmail.com, or you can absolutely look me up on LinkedIn. Man, I'm pumped for the future with you, dude. I'm, I'm excited to see what happens, and uh, I know folks hearing this uh, are just inspired, man. You, I, I, your, your story does that just because it's a testimony of what God can do, man, for someone who's just surrender. So uh, appreciate it. Uh, thankful for you, man. Well, hey, I am grateful for the platform you've created and for allowing me the time to get on here, share my story. Hopefully this can impact some people and we can go make a big difference, buddy. 100%. Guys, if you enjoyed this, make sure you leave us a five-star review. Help us continue to get the word out here so that we can support <clears throat> guys like Todd, in their mission, making this a platform that others hear about and know about does that. So thanks for being a part of that. Please leave us a five-star review and share this on social media. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Todd. Blessings.